Hello, and welcome to another episode of Building Your Business with the Certified Commercial Property Inspectors Association. Uh, this episode today, we are going to talk to Christian Adams, the co-founder of Repair Pricer. So with that, I'd like to introduce Christian Adams. So I'd like to welcome Christian Adams uh, with us from Repair Pricer. Welcome, Christian. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate you guys having us here. Oh, my my absolute pleasure. Uh, I, I guess before we get uh, too far along, I'd like to have you introduce yourself and give us a little bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Christian Adams. I'm one of the co-founders of Repair Pricer. Um, I call myself a recovering real estate broker. Uh, I was an agent and a broker for my own sins uh, for almost 20 years, primarily in the Texas markets, um, focusing on the residential side more than commercial. Uh, but I I had teams of up to 150 agents working with me across Texas, um, scaled that company for, for a number of years. Um, and that background in real estate and real estate brokerage is really kind of what, what drove repair prices to come into existence. Interesting. So, so you saw kind of a, a need in the marketplace to to help consumers identify some of their immediate or long term costs, and decided that was a way that you could uh, fill a niche without having to be directly in the sales portion. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. So, it's definitely a need. Um, I'd say a lot of it was driven more. So, as a broker and as like a lead agent, you tend to review all your contracts, or you should for your newer agents and any agents really, because when you're a broker, you cover the e and insurance. Yeah. So if they're putting something in that contract that's not correct, you know, you need to be aware of it so you can correct it before it gets signed off on by the client. And yeah, so one, one thing I saw was actually our agents came from sales background, corporate backgrounds, even hospitality, that kind of thing. Great salespeople, very honest, right, very forthright, uh, great salespeople, but they didn't have a construction background. So mm -hmm. one of my guys, Darren, I won't say his last name, but he put a contract amendment across my desk for a water heater that said $400 for a new water heater. And I was, I said, you know, where did you get this number? How did you come up with $400? He said, oh, I went on homedepot.com and that's how much it costs. Mm -hmm. I'm like, maybe for the tank. So what I started doing is really getting into it with a huge volume of deals, however. So I couldn't personally oversee the pricing for every amendment. So I actually brought in Rob Ty, who was our COO and one of the founders. He was a real estate developer in Dallas, a builder. He's a certified master inspector uh, as well, coincidentally. And I had him and his team start running mini repair price reports for us internally. Oh. Um, we'd send those over, get like a spreadsheet back. And we were doing that ourselves in-house. Um, then what happened is other agents kind of found out about this and it got quite popular and it wasn't feasible for Rob and his folks to do this for free. So they started charging for them. And then I kind of looked at the legalities of it and I was like, I can't be charging agents from outside my brokerage through our brokerage for these reports. Like we can't be doing that. So we, we set up repair prices as an LLC initially just in the Dallas market. And then from there, you fast forward now, we've processed over a million reports. We operate in every single state. We integrate with almost every single inspection software platform. Um, but I think the key here is we built it initially for agents, but it does help consumers. Mm -hmm. And and that's where in the commercial side, it's, it's interesting. We I consider our commercial uh, cost to cure reports are actually for the consumer, for the buyer. But a commercial buyer is very different to a residential buyer, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent different. And that's, uh, I'm, I'm right now on the road. I'm in a lovely hotel room as I am every other week, uh, th this time of year. And that's probably the toughest thing I have when I have a new student with me, uh, or somebody entering into the commercial world is these are two distinctly different consumers the buyer of a residential versus the buyer of a of a commercial building don't have the same needs, the same wants, the same expectations. And is that, that's something you had to, had to take in mind as you've ventured that as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, somebody, I sold over 1200 homes personally. Okay. So, but again, primarily on the residential side, 
I was dealing with people who were like, I don't like the paint and let me talk about the schools and maybe the landscaping needs something. And these are things you can easily remedy, but it's you're dealing with an emotional response to a property. That's what it comes down to. Whereas when you're selling commercial property, and I did sell a small amount and lease some too, it's a financial decision. Yeah. It is a financial decision. Often they have a huge amount of money tied up in these places. They need to know that this property is going to perform. It's going to make them money. It's going to be part of a portfolio. Maybe it's part of a 1031 exchange, moving money around to keep things rolling. It is purely a financial decision. Um, and, and that's, I think, where our product is almost more important. Than that. Yeah. Right. It's really useful for agents, but for a commercial investor, they need the information. Right. This they need that information to go and make that decision and say, yeah, well, I know I'm paying 3.5 million for the property, but what's my five year cost to maintain it? Sure. And 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 that's why and that's why I've asked you to be here today is is it, it, as part of our COMSOP, our commercial standards of practice in section seven, which we lay out the report style. We do not have to provide cost to cure or cost aggregations or cost or, or or repair cost to repair as part of our standard service. But for our but for our members and, and those using the COMSOP, it's certainly something they can provide. And that's usually that next question is how? Yeah. <laughs> and 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 that's where you're transitioning your product from a million satisfied consumers on the residential side into potentially another million satisfied consumers on the commercial side certainly helps us. So can you talk a little bit about that transition that you've undertaken? Yeah. Yeah. And I will say we're fully midway through it. We're not complete. And this is why I value this relationship so much because yep. we want CCPIA feedback 100%. We already work with a lot of members, but we're constantly trying to iterate. So let's imagine the taxonomy. We've got a taxonomy for residential homes of approximately 2,000 items, but some of those don't translate over to the commercial world and right. vice versa, right? Like we're not going to repave a parking lot for a three bedroom residential home. Like it, it doesn't make sense. We might bid a driveway and there's just different language that's used. Um, so part of that is rebuilding the taxonomy, right? We, however, we get our taxonomy and we built our one over the years from ingesting reports. So the more reports we get, the bigger our taxonomy gets, um, right. the better the accuracy gets as well. Um, and that's another thing which, if you think about the commercial reports for repair pricer, they're actually more similar to our early days repair pricer reports. So we went out to build the product. It obviously didn't exist. No one had undertaken this challenge. Um, and so it was very hard for us to build this taxonomy and pricing set for all of these, these items and these defects. Um, so we did it manually. We hit the phones. And so on a majority of our commercial inspection reports, we actually hit the phones. Mm -hmm. And that's why it takes a little bit longer. So residential reports take 24 hours. Commercial reports are 48 hours. Okay, and that's guaranteed. But it's because oftentimes in areas where we haven't done a huge amount, we are actually polling contractors in real time. Mm -hmm. We're talking them through things. But then we take that information, we record it, maybe we extend the taxonomy, we update our pricing, right? And so that's one side of what we're doing to kind of drive change. The other is the format. Should it look the same? Should it look different? Should it go beyond just these are the things that need fixing and here's what it's going to cost today, right? This is really what we're digging into at this point. And I know uh, Rob Ty is heading to uh, Dallas to meet with some of you folks uh, in April. Of yeah, yeah, we, uh, we are going to have a class in April that you've uh, graciously offered to help us with uh with a lunch one of those days yes yeah yeah well luckily rob's about 25 miles away so it's not so much of a challenge for him to get there but yeah we want again we want a lot of participation in anything we do from your okay. members just to see here's what we have today what else would you like to see right what can we do um and to your point earlier no inspectors don't have to do this and we say yeah you shouldn't have to do it but you should have a way that enables your client to get the information. Yeah. Right. Oh, put, I, put the responsibility on us, put the liability on us, let us do that, but guide us with what you would like to see. I, I agree a hundred percent. And that's where even, even circling back to when you talked about the differences, we often talk about the big three when, when we go through our classes and, and those are the most, the three most expensive items of a building. 
And those those are often uh, never identified the same way by by some. And those those are the parking lot mm-hmm. or parking area, the HVAC, and the roof. Yeah. And when you stand back and look at a building, and and where your service comes in so valuably is when you can say your thirty five thousand square foot roof could be a million dollars worth of roof. Yeah. And and that that's like for somebody just entering into this side of the, of the inspection profession daunting and, yeah. and on the residential side, Oh yeah. You talked about, yeah, we can do a, we can do an aggregation on a new parking, on a new driveway. And home inspectors don't often think about the driveway other than a throwaway item in front of the house. Yeah. A parking area is a critical item to a commercial building, a poor parking lot, a li- uh, prohibits patrons from coming to their par- par- parking lot safely and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go give them money if i gotta get my car banged up yeah as as so that's the first impression so so you're absolutely right yeah and it is tough to come up with those numbers yeah yeah i think what's a good point you're making there is when we're seeing this too a lot of people we're seeing who have been in the residential inspection business are making a transition or adding services mm-hmm. or on the commercial front because they've realized there is an opportunity there um, and there is some crossover. And I, I think what's key, though, again, is like, as we found out, on the commercial side, don't worry about blowing up the deal, right? Your customers need this information to make the decision. They may look at that million-dollar roof as a capital expenditure, and they're, they're okay to make it, but it's going to be factored into their investment approach, right, and the negotiations. They're happy to take the ammunition and go back to the seller and say, have you seen your roof? When did you last walk it? Right, because we just yeah. walked in today, and to your point with the HVAC, especially on a flat roof building, yeah, we've got 32 AC units on that roof, so I'm gonna have to pull those off. And while I'm doing that, you know what? I might as well replace them because why am I gonna remove those to replace the roof without replacing the AC units? And again, it becomes a cost that they have to know about. But yeah. these are these are the differences that that seller may not even have thought about, right? Um, but it, it's an important part of the process. And, and there's a good chance they're going to do a cost segregation study on all those and amortize them over a very short period of time versus a 30 year period of time and get a better tax benefit. And it just, it just keeps expounding where, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You do not have to be afraid of the number because at the end of the day, that commercial client's intelligent and yeah. they're not looking at, at a number as a finite number. They're looking at it as a number of as opportunity. Yeah, that's, that's why they buy a deal, really, yeah. is what is the impact of me buying this building? What is the financial impact of me? What if I'm going to rent it, right? Like, what is my monthly rent? I know that. I know my tax burden at the moment. You know, I know my interest on it. But the unknown is, what is it going to cost me to keep it in this condition, keep that parking lot with the lights lit at night yeah. so we can get evening business and nobody's tripping up on the sidewalk and all these things that they think about. Um, they just need to know that information. Like you said, yeah, you don't have to have it, but it's ultimately what they want and they'll need. So your, your 48 hour turnaround is impressive. Uh, I, I'll have to, I'll have to say that on a commercial side. Um, even, even if I was doing a cost study for myself and calling people, I often don't get a hold of people that quick in time. So so you're 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 creating these tables, obviously, in-house. And so when you're doing when you're doing a, a price, a repair pricer for a building, are you taking into consideration localities or are you using a pretty widespread number? No, we always try and go zip code specific. Okay. Now in very rural areas, that can be tough sometimes. We'll have to go to a major metro and then track out. And so yeah, if you're like in the middle of Wisconsin, the middle of nowhere, we're going to probably call into a major city. What are you? What are your trip fees? What's the turnaround? You know what I mean, like kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, even West Texas, actually, honestly, when we look at stuff down at the valley in Texas, we know we're actually probably going to use people from major cities, and they're going to go out there, yeah. right? And they're going to go on the job for two or three days, and then complete it and come back. So we do try and get zip code specific. Accuracy is really important. Um, it's tough for us to put a number on how accurate it is, though, because we see contractor bids off by 20%. Yeah. Right? So we try and go in the median. Everything we quote, especially on commercial, is going to be for a licensed technician, if that's required in that area. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Um, so we're going to be towards the top in that could you find someone to do it for cheaper? 100%. Sure. Yeah. But again, if you're buying, if you're buying a property for five mil, I don't want the lipstick on a pig guy. Right. right. I, I want it done right. I don't mind spending a bit more because I'm going to own this property as an investment, maybe as part of a portfolio or a trust. I want to know that it's been in, been done right. But yeah, we, we try to get as accurate as possible. And, you know, uh, there are some things sometimes we can't bid. Okay. Water penetration is really tough. Yeah. Right. Like we can see the roofs in poor condition, but what if this roofs in poor condition and then there's also evidence of staining and things interior and we can't access that area. So sometimes we will call something out and we'll actually say, look, repair price is not right for you. You need, you need someone to come pull that wall open basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, something, but we will call that out. We will specifically say, this is what we see is going on. We don't feel confident that we can bid this remotely. And in some cases, like for an engineer, we'll actually quote, and we track local pricing for engineers. So there's okay. massive structural movement. We'll say, right, an engineer um, in your area would typically charge 1800 to analyze that building. This is what we recommend you do. And it's your course of action. So, that, so that's interesting. Well, because you're only as smart as the data that, that's given to you. Yeah. And, and so... And so with, again, with, within the ComSOP, we don't predicate a specific reporting system. And some, some inspectors might use one of the, one of the on the market software uh, providers that's, that's very re recognized. And some might use a simple Word document. Are you able to take any of those? Uh, and and all, all, what, what do you need? Let me ask you that. What do you need from, from the inspector? Yeah, so I mean, it's true, junk in, junk out, right? Yep. We get a bad report. On the commercial side, I will say we don't typically see that. Residential surprise, Rob, yeah. it's going to be terrible. Yeah. No pictures, right? Like, we can't really do our job. Um, but just so you know how the system works. So everything is human reviewed. But as we scaled, we had to lean on AI to translate reports. And what I mean by that is that we use something called natural language processing. So we read the report using AI as a human, we translate it, and then we present that information to our reviewers. So imagine you've got your original comment, okay? Mm -hmm. You've got what we think we've identified that as and the severity, the suggested price and the pictures, and then that goes to our reviewer. So what it means is our reviewer doesn't have to pour through a 230 page PDF, yeah. right? They've got it and they look at it individually, they can look at it together. So it doesn't really matter the format. We're the only company in the world that can do that with inspection reports, right? That so we can actually take any report on any platform, extract it, pass it, match it, identify it, and do that within about a minute. And that's why that 48 hour turnaround. Yeah. Because we've got we've got a list, right, already built. And, and they categorize the items as well by contractor. So we know when we've run through that, oh, this is a an HVAC contractor. Cool. I'm going to call and get everything on this. We're not coming back later to, to kind of categorize it. Whereas an inspection okay. report is typically not done that way. It's not built for contractors, right? So it takes a little bit longer, but that's why we built it that way. Because like, no, we're not an inspection company. We're basically like the nicest general contractor who's going to give you bids, right? And then not expect to get any work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the more information, the better, right? Um, if there are windows that have failed, we'd like to know how many windows, right? If if there, you know, that quantity is really how uh, we say you don't have to, because again, with commercials, it's really manual. We'll look at pictures, we'll look at satellite images, we'll look at street view, we'll use eagle eye and things like that occasionally to get root pictures and, and figure it out. But yeah, the more information, the better. But we say don't change your reporting style if you're happy with it. Sure, right? sure. So you're doing a good job. Well, we might tell you if you're not. We don't tend to do that. On the commercial, on the residential, we reject reports. Okay, good, good. Yeah, we'll oh, give you back. That's valid. Um, so let, let's think of HVAC, HVAC for a moment. And we, you mentioned rooftop. And boy, you're, it's not uncommon to see you know, a dozen, two dozen, four dozen rooftop units. I was just looking out the window here at my hotel over at a convention center. And there's, in my one view, I've got 22 boxcars on the roof 
So yeah. when you're when you're doing your repair price on those, I got to assume that you're calculating the crane as well. Yeah, we'll calculate everything. These are people that have done this for a living looking at this, right? Okay. We know what it's going to take. Now, that's a really good point. Let's say there was only one of those box cars on the roof. Yeah. Still got to pay for a crane. Yeah. So we yeah. figure that kind of stuff in as well. A trip charges, equipment, all of that goes into it. Um, and that's why I say we have a good picture. Yeah, we can see. And if you haven't counted, we'll try and count as well. We'll try and look at satellite and count too. So, um, yeah, but the more information, the better. Uh, that's outstanding. I want to, I want to, if I, if I can try to make technology work for us, I'm going to try to pull up here um, your sample that, uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't think I did it right. Let me go back. I, I have it pulled up. If you want me to bring it up? Oh, that would be, that would be absolutely awesome. Let's see if I'm allowed to. I am not allowed to apparently. Uh, no, your screen's up now. There we go. All right. I'll let you do it. All right. I think you're going to have to enable me to do screen sharing. Uh, multiple, uh, there. All right. I think I did it. All right. Oh, no. Give me one second. I have this one. I think this is the one I brought up with you in Hagerstown. Yep. Like, this is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is one thing that I'm talking about, like the format for commercials are a little bit different, but we want to take it beyond this. The, for those of you familiar with the residential repair price, it looks really, really similar. So we have a cover page with a more commercial look to it. We reference the address. We basically specify a timestamp on it. Just so people know, we have a support team that runs seven days a week, 365 days a year. And if you have any changes to report, if you have more information, if we've counted 12 of those units and it's actually 22, you can send that back and we'll update and recalculate mm -hmm. things. Um, and there's actually a support link there at the bottom of the report you can use. Um, so that date stamp's important. So you know when the last one was published. but. Like I said, we categorize it by contractor type. So for instance, here, you'll see majority of this one was 120K in HVAC. It would sure. be something similar to what we're talking about, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, roofing contract in this case appears it's not roof mounted. And we'll go down. So it ranks it by who should you really be talking to down to, you know, tiny, tiny items. And then it essentially gives you the cost for the whole report. Now, when you were talking about the, the crane and things earlier, this is where this comes in. And we do have an explainer here. And by the way, it's not called the whole home estimate anymore. Again, we've been updating this to get yeah, yeah, yeah. around this. Um, this is a slightly older one. But essentially, yeah, the whole home or the whole property report here essentially figures out, well, if you actually had a GC out here and they were fixing everything at one time, rather than the individual items, this would be your cost. But what's interesting, if you went through and you were really bored and you added up all these items individually, it's going to be higher than that. Because if you called out electrician to come and do one splice, right, they're going to charge you a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. But if you start adding in other items, the cost goes down because they're already on site and they're doing a panel replacement and other things like that. So that, that's how we figure all of that out in the trip charges and equipment costs and things like that. Um, but basically, yeah, it's it's all categorized by the attrition. Uh, sorry, by the contractor type, so the HVAC, mm -hmm. plumber, roofing. Um, and it goes through in these individual items. And essentially, you'll see here where it says further action required. These are the ones where we're like, okay, we couldn't quite figure this out. We might need some more information. So it's saying here, like my example, evidence of previous moisture intrusion was observed in the electrical room. But we couldn't see on the report where that's coming from. So our recommendation is basically you need a crawl space leak specialist to come in and identify this. Mm -hmm. And in this part of town, that's what you're projected to pay for a service like that. Excellent. Um, just so you know as well, again, if nobody's familiar with our system, we have a, a platform called Resolve. It's free. There's no monthly management costs. All of your reports live in there in perpetuity. But you can actually download these reports um, in a CSV format as well. Okay. Yeah. And for commercial investors, they really like that because they'll often use like cap table projection software mm -hmm. where they want to ingest that. So we let them do that. They can just bring it into their software um, they can edit it, play with it, mess with it, you know, um, but people can always download it as a PDF, which is what I showed you. 
they can also interact with things in real time here. Okay. Um, and like take things off. I mean, typically this is, this is mainly built for negotiation for residential people, but um, yeah, this is most of our investors on the commercial side download it as a spreadsheet and then we'll bring it into the other software and offers and things like that. Well, I think that's great. I mean, I, I can think of, oh, what was it? Five, seven years ago, most of the, a brokerage agencies in Florida were asking for something like this for residential so that they had a chance to, to create their, their letters to the sellers or letters, you know, of negotiation backwards based on data like this. And so having this on the commercial side would certainly be a benefit, even if you were doing it just for in-house. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it was built. But like I said, the system was really built for homes. We're just working towards, we are using it for commercial. We've done thousands, right? But not the million plus no. that we've done on the, on the not yet. side. Not yet. We're not working yet. On it. And it's going, right. it's going really well. We've seen a significant increase in commercial uh, reports this year already. So, well, it's, it's, we're, we're 50 years behind the residential world. And so it's, uh, it's taking us a while to, to, to get the inertia, to get the, this industry well recognized. That's for darn sure. Yeah, but I tell you, the conferences and those of you that go to like Internashi and Ashi and Tapria and, you know, all of the conferences like the IGO ones we have and IAB, every time I talk to somebody there that does a commercial, I never get the same objections or questions that I do from the residential side. It's really like, how long does it take? How much does it cost? What does it look like? Sure. No, oh, yeah. Not, why do I need it? The need is understood. Sure. Sure. If you want to pop off that screen, that'd be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you said in, any PDF report you can handle. Yeah. Long as there's good photos, well-written descriptions, and a clear objective of the of the defect, then you guys can you guys can play from there. Yeah, correct. And and you feel that in 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 the world of accuracy. I mean, you guys are hitting that high per, that high ninety percentile probably every time, except for those issues that you can't delineate because they're either poorly written or not enough information. Yeah, yeah, and even then, when we're recommending an action, the pricing we give of the action recommended is normally pretty accurate too. If it's yeah. for the engineer or the crawl space expert, so we we get that information as well. We don't leave them hanging. Good, excellent. So. Um, you know, I guess it's you know you get a little infomercial time. Uh, what what do you, what what is the cost for a report for our members? For CCPI members, um, so initially up front, we give you free onboarding and free software setup. Okay, that's normally one ninety nine, uh, and then you get fifty percent off your first two reports to come and try us out, and then after that, on a small multifamily, our pricing varies by the way. So yep. on a small multifamily up to like four units, actually I think it's, it is eight now. Good. A hundred. And then up to 20 units is 125. And then larger properties would be about 150 for like large apartment complexes and full commercial office rest restaurants, larger industrial buildings, things like that is at $200 at the moment. Now I will say as we uh, improve the product, that pricing may go up slightly. Um, but I will tell you this as well. When I talk to, and we've got hundreds of inspectors across the U.S. that use us yeah. on the commercial side. Most inspectors are doubling their money at the moment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if they're selling them for $400 and they're getting billed 200 without lifting a finger, essentially, then it takes 30 seconds to get an order. We handle delivery. We handle support. We handle everything. Um, so, yeah, I would caveat that that pricing may change, um, but only as we essentially extend the service and look what else we can add and improve. It's funny when you say they're doubling, doubling, it doesn't take a whole lot no. of, of, of effort. I, 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 I tell a story in my class of an inspection I did uh, on a house of worship and my fee was only uh, $2,500, but my cost to cure was 3,500 yeah. because it was just in that bad of shape. And that was the matriculations I was going to have to go through to get my numbers. And, and if I can, if I can take and use a service like yours, that's going to cost me 200 or even if it was $400, it's still a bargain in my time because I'm going to work and letting you guys do the numbers. 
and I can charge whatever I want to charge for it and hand them a third party verif verified accurate report that's invaluable to me yeah yeah and also i think when you think about the value to the client right let's say that report we looked at just now is two hundred eleven thousand dollars. yeah what are, they, what are they going to negotiate 130 maybe yeah so you just got one hundred thirty thousand dollars for four or five hundred bucks yeah that's not a yeah. bad certain investment right there so no no yeah. no no so I, I think it's fabulous. I, I think what you guys are doing, I, I know you and I talked a couple, three or four years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that about this product. And uh, I, I think it's great. I think it's evolved into something wonderful, Christian. And, and I think you guys need to be very proud of it. Um, I can't, I, I am looking forward to being able to partner with you guys. Uh, A, offer an awesome, awesome benefit to our members, but B, help you provide and even if you could say more superior than what you're already at uh, and even more superior product, you know, count me in. I'm here to help you. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate this, you know, support from you guys, CCPA and internationally and everybody over the years, right. That's helped us get to this point. It literally is the movement of the members putting their reports through our system that has got us here. Right. And that's what will keep improving the product. We keep improving the accuracy. Uh, we do have a landing page for you guys as well. It's repairpricer.com forward slash CCPIA. Um, and that's got more details on the program there. And like I said, yeah, we look forward to being in, in Dallas um, in April. I will unfortunately not be there. Um, but yeah, any ideas anybody has, we really appreciate them. And I think anybody who's worked with us over the years will know that we really do listen to feedback and we build off it. That's what drives the change. That's terrific, Christian. I, I want to thank you so much for uh, spending a, a couple of moments uh, today with me. And I know for our members, I think uh, they're going to see the links that we have uh, on the bottom of this uh, on the bottom of this page. And and I, and I'm sure that, that you're going to get hit up with uh, with some new uh, some new patrons. And uh, I, I will continue to carry your flag for you, Christian. I really appreciate it. Rob. Thank you. Be safe. Thanks so much.